Hey people, it's our white 2013 150 Prado GX. We're going to have a whole heap of information repairing the front end. We're going to uh, change out the lower control on bushes, the, the arms actually. I'll show you that in a minute and a bit of information with that. So hopefully you can avoid those bushes cracking if you understand how they work, how they come out. It's going to help you if you ever have to change them. A few things going on, so we'll get the wheels off and get started. And this is where this is where the fancy music is meant to come on. Dun, 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 you know they got their theme music. Dun, 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 dun. No, mate, this channel is just simples. Okay, so what are we doing here and why? These are the few jobs we're taking care of. We're changing to a different front spring. I'll explain that throughout the video. Or we'll check the suspension playlist for more info. But it's a 150 Prado, no bull bar. We're going from a 302 to a 350 but we're gonna drop the spring seat on this one, probably about six millimeters, which drops the height of the vehicle about 12 because we don't have a bull bar. You probably see over there, I've got a good set of 60,000 kilometer genuine control arms, which I wanna continue using. And we're doing some R&D on some new ones, other stories in other videos. So just subscribe, turn the bell and you get the whole picture. Now, these bushes in these lower control arms, the lower ones, they're totally, absolutely flogged. Now, the vehicle was on original suspension for 200,000 Ks, part of the problem, bouncing over speed humps, twisting the bushes, but I'm gonna give you more info, other causes that cause even more damage a bit later in the video. Then the Dobinson's twin tubes went in, they got hammered in the outback for 100,000 Ks, probably stayed in there a bit too long, something along those lines anyway, which of course, less control in the front, more bouncing around over speed humps and every time you brake and, and all that and up and down, twisting these bushes, okay? Twist them less is better. Okay, so we're doing changing the lower control arms. I've already done one set this morning, getting those out of another vehicle and putting another set in that we're doing some R&D on. Uh, it's about 9 a.m. at the moment. We're gonna drop the front struts out because they're easier to drop out while the control arms are out of the way to change the springs and the brakes pulsate pretty badly. So we've got a set of LSI rotors and the genuine brake pads from lsiauto.com.au. Don't forget the discount code, Forby4-2023. Butter bing, so pads and rotors, changing springs and lower control arms with a bunch of information on changing the control arms because we haven't done a lot on that and um, how these nuts, the sizes of them, which nuts you need to undo and um, what causes and, and the bits and pieces and the spares you might need here. And we might put a bit of grease on there and we'll show you what we're talking about once we get to that. We'll get up in the air and start ripping things out. Before we do that though, it would be wise actually to take these three nuts at the top here, one, two and the third one behind not this middle one here um, because we want to drop the strut out so i'm going to take the back one off i'm going to take one of these off and i'm going to loosen the other one so it's only just held by a couple of threads then we take the bottom bolt out it doesn't fall when we're ready to drop it out we just take the last nut off and just bring the whole assembly right, down. so both sides i've got the top nuts off and just one last one just holding it there right waiting so you're going to need your bash plate off to get these bolts out so just take your front and rear bash plate off good opportunity to do a bit of inspection anyway um, now remember on the lower control arms at the front, this is a bolt so you need to undo from the front, from memory, 22 mil, okay, 22 mil single hex socket, Zzz, that's going to come out of that uh, adjuster over there, so the bolt comes out the front, if I remember correctly, and around this side, um, the nut comes off the back, so I think it's 22 as well, so we're going to go ahead and remove the 22 mil nut from the back, and I could be wrong, so stay tuned so I can correct it if I'm wrong, and uh, the bolt from the front, and then you've got the adjuster. We're gonna show you those later on the bench with more detail. Probably make a couple of videos out of this, one pulling it apart, and maybe another one putting it back together, or who knows what might happen. So at the moment, we're gonna get all of that out. We're gonna get this bottom bolt of the bottom of the strut assembly out. This is another reason why, you know when you get your suspension and they go, oh no, you have to get a wheel on it, you must get a wheel on it. That's because they like to do it the easy way. What they do, they drop these bottom, bolts which is cool you can drop these two bottom 19 mils here that's what we're going to do that one there this one here right and loosen these off and then this whole arm just drops down and then you'll see the access from underneath where this probably drops straight down which saves you removing components like your tie rod end uh, maybe your sway bar we're going to do it and see and demonstrate um, each vehicle is different um, it's not just about prados here it's a bit of general information as well so that's what i'm taking out now okay these two bottom bolts here one two that one at the bottom of the strut and these, and then get these lower control arms out is the first thing. Once they're out, then we're gonna drop the strut out. The other thing I didn't mention yet, I'll take that split pin out and loosen that nut here while it's on the ground, because we're also gonna need to get this piece off. 
with a bit of a spray and a gentle tap should come off pretty easily, but we will find out, that's for sure. You can use a puller if you've got one or you can put it in a press. So I've taken those two bolts out. I've popped that bolt nut off and washer and just given it a tap. There's a bit of pressure, but that'll come off once we loosen these. We don't loosen these until we mark it, okay? So I wanna put the original mark so I can put it back together as close as possible. So I'm gonna mark the bottom of the adjuster to the frame on both sides of each bush, so eight marks. Anyway, there's the marks, but have a look, see the frame here? This one's been a bit hit, so it's gonna make it hard to get this arm out. So we'll straighten that up a little bit, but you wanna be careful you don't bend this too much up here, as it was, it makes the arms a bit, you know, this is also a problem hitting these. So good underbody protection. I reckon k probably gives that a bit of protection, but anyway, you can see all the marks, what I'm talking about, anyway. All right, so this is difficult, where it gets difficult being a one person band, but like I said, bolt out of the front it's safe to remove that and the adjuster piece will just in a minute with a bit of wiggling it'll just come off we'll get and to that be clear these bushes are flogged i'll show them to you in a minute once we get it all off so the back bolt completely out that usually comes out easy the one on the back half right so it's completely out the only thing holding it is this adjuster okay so there's a bolt at the back which is that's all there is. At the front, there's like an adjuster or a sleeve, and this is what can get corroded to the inside of the arm. So I'm gonna demonstrate. Just give me a second, I'll get a spanner for this. Yeah, I'll get a wheel on it and say, I want a proper wheel on it, and then they get on this to adjust it. Look how the whole arm and everything wants to move together. Oh, I can't even, can't even turn it, because this is my point, is at the moment, 320,000 Ks, this is all genuine, original, everything's great, but I can't move that. Hang on. I got lucky, it's not seized. Man, either the bush is gone or it's not seized. Let's look around this side. Oh, wow, look at that, see? You can see the movement between the inner and the outer still. This is how good Toyota Genuine stuff is, right? So going away from those bushes, because it's all part of it. So in this case, you're lucky. So you will on it, right? That's what twists the arm in and out. Now, the whole thing is not working too well because it does need some maintenance and a clean up. Let's see what happens at this side. Go around this side. Amazing. They're not seized, right? I have these things heaps lower codes than this and they're seized. Um, we do keep these sleeves in stock on the shelf there. If you get the arms off us, you don't need these. But if you need them, then worst case scenario, we got them on the shelf. Do you know what I mean? So only for people that got arms from us. We can't be just doing small things for people. But just it's the plan B. It's the backup plan. All right. So now we've got to just pop this sleeve out, which I can't hold the camera and do. So you get the picture, this whole front piece is connected to that sleeve and it all comes off together. I'll show you it all on the bench in a minute. All right, so can you imagine if that was seized to the inner part of the bush, what it does then, it just twists all the rubber, but it's not the case in point at the moment. So we're gonna drop this bolt out as well now that these are loose. Um, and once you pull that bolt out, the whole arm will just swing down like that because these are loose, right? So what I mean, allowing that easy access to get the strut in and out. Oh yes, you definitely need a wheel alignment. And the other one just fell down because it's sitting there loose, right? So it's just gone. Because I just pulled the bolt out, it's just gone like that. One side came out as planned. That's what they look like when they're empty. Like an empty hole, there you go, all right? Beautiful, you can clean it up, you can paint it if you want, whatever you want to do. Keep them nice and clean though. After trips, wash these areas out with lots of water get all the grit out and then drive the vehicle, get it to dry, leaving mud, dirt, corrosion, all the stuff in that helps corrosion isn't gonna work. But see, see, because it's bent, it's holding the bush in. So what I'll do, I'll lift it up and pull it out this way, need two hands. Okay, so they're out, piece of cake, potato cake. Now remember we loosened that nut already, took the pin out, loosened the nut. Now I've sprayed some inox on there. Gonna let those sit for a bit. Waiting. I'm just gonna lower the vehicle a little bit so I can reach that top nut up there easily. I could reach, but a bit hard. And let's just see if this whole strut drops straight down um, in doing so. Show you on camera so you can see for yourselves what works and what doesn't and any other components that need to be moved out of the way. So here we are to the dirty vice bench and you can see, look how bad that they're just off their heads, right? Completely. Look, we'll try and get a bit more access later in the video when we've got more time to waste. You can see where that one got hit, where the frame even got hit. Now you don't have to straighten that. But I'm going to do a little bit of work on it, but not too much. Um, but see the bushes, right? These are definitely due for replacement. Overdue if you like. And the longer you leave them, the more they, uh, you know, 
But you know, you look at these ones, it's actually hard to get in there and see the cracks. You're gonna even get the part number there if you like. But um, they get really stuck in there. See that rust in that hole there? That's kind of like, you know, there's a bit of that going in. Look, they've got these holes that you punch out. See, they all fill up with dirt and rust and whatever, because when you press the bush in, the resist, it's an interference fit. It's about the first, I don't know, I would haven't measured it, estimating eight or 10 mil up this end that is where it goes in and the rest of it, you know, it's not that tight, if you know what I mean. It's just that last little bit. So it, I've done all sorts of things, smashing these holes in, soaking them, all sorts of things. You can see here, all right, the bushes off their heads in particular. What I wanted to show you is those adjusters when they're in there, there's the big bush and the small bush. The small bush is the one at the front of the big adjuster that gets seized. And I'm not saying that's what happened, but look, this one's already off its head anyway, completely gone. Anyway, I will keep these arms because they're original genuines and we're working on a system to change these bushes. We've got some of the bushes on the shelf, the rest are coming. Sometimes that can be a bit difficult to get your hands on. Um, and we'll get some new bushes into those. You can't buy a genuine ball joint separately. Um, the only way to ha get it is an arm. That's why it's, can be, you know, you can replace the arm if you like. This one's actually a little bit looser than this one, so we might have to check that, but I've never seen problems with lower ball joints. Now this is passenger side, driver's side. This is the rear, this is the front. Okay, so the one that was, so these are the bolts. So you can put a little bit of grease on those if you think the grease isn't gonna just make dirt stick and all that. It's good materials, but eventually it rusts through. I will give it a clean up and put some uh, grease on it. Don't really care what grease. When it comes to that, grease is grease. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. They leave them dry for a reason. Could be a good reason. Maybe they just didn't know Australian conditions for 500,000 kilometers, because that's what we want out of the cars. We're not just after four years and then sell it. That's not the life of the vehicle in Australia. If you want to know how to maintain it, the life of the vehicle in Australia, like I say, subscribe to Neville and don't miss these videos. A uh, bit, bit of um, waffling and rambling and talking under concrete with a mouthful of marbles, but it's all information you need. Again, another rear one. You can see the corrosion. Just put a bit of grease on that. You put a little bit in the bush. I think it's only got to help, right? Put in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you're the grease and metallurgist engineer expert, of course, everyone's an expert because they've got a piece of paper because there was some organisation that somehow has the authority to give you a piece of paper to know if you're the smartest guy or you're the best engineer, all based on a training system that they invented. So hang on, who was the first engineer and why was he so smart? Anyway, some deep thoughts, right? So this is my whole point, just because you've got a piece of paper doesn't mean you know more than a guy that hasn't. Now, I'm not saying anyone hasn't got a piece of paper, I'm just saying, you know, there's plenty of people out there that are very intelligent, they haven't got a piece of paper to prove anything. Um, but they're a bit smarter than the people with the piece of paper. And a lot of people know what I'm talking about because there's a lot of things going on. Now, that front piece does actually separate from the tube as well. If you hit it hard enough, that will come out, but that's not what's meant to happen. You can see the little teeth, the splines there, okay? If it's seized enough, it will happen. Give it a clean up, put some grease on it. You don't need new ones. If these came out at 320K, it's looking good. You can start spraying them long before you work on them. If you're going to take your vehicle for a wheel alignment, I highly recommend you mark and you spray clean, you loosen, you free these up, make sure they're moving like these ones are. If they're not, free them up, work them a bit, tap them in and out. You'll get it working, clean them up, put grease on them, put them back in on the mark, then take it for the wheel alignment, see? All the info, you just probably already know if you've been watching the videos because sometimes we've got to go over these things, but I'm just showing you what's what and it's commonly the front that does get seized and then when someone does a wheel alignment, twist that bush, doesn't it, right? So that's the whole point. When you get a lift kit and they say, you've got to get a wheel alignment, well, probably because they've dropped the arms, you get my picture, right? Because our 2000 and January 2022, 1GD with a two inch lift has never had a wheel alignment, drives great. That being said, I've just put a new set of trial control arms for the people that are watching, you're wondering what's going on, yes. We've got some of the best, cheapest arms we could find. We did some homework, doesn't matter what brand, where we got them from, how much they are. Just wait and see at the moment. First, I want to see what they drive like. If you want to be part of the R&D, come and see me. The word's best, cheapest, not the cheapest, best, cheapest. And uh, we're going to see how they go. Apparently, they're good rubber and all that sort of thing. Um, they're in the 1GD. It's uh, just under two years old now. It's about to do the 60,000K service in a few days and a wheel alignment. Because, yes, we took these out to change the arms. We marked it. Still going to drive awesome, but we're going to actually take note of the before and after readings if we can. 
and that'll be an interesting one and to see what it drives like afterwards with a wheel on it for 60,000 k's without a wheel on it and then probably another 60,000 with a wheel on it all right beautiful all right, let's see if i can get this strut out without getting in the way of the video this is the problem right i want to sort of uh get far enough back so you can see everything what's going on but i need to get in a bit closer so you can see what's going on <laughs> okay so trying to demonstrate is this going to work the moment everyone's been waiting for okay so i'm lifting it up taking the weight of it taking the top nut off now with this one you've got to be very careful because you've still got the sway bar and everything there so if you don't want to scratch your springs a lot it will fit out depending on the exact position of your sway bar when you've bolted up those brackets but as you can see there it is with the sway bar and the tie rod ends intact so put that on the floor and the nut with the other two on the side step so we don't lose anything so since this video is probably getting a bit long with all the info you can have it inspect and clean that if you like right there's not much to see let me turn that one much better yeah see okay you can have just showing you around a bit all right inspections of things some people have these uh nuts come loose so check those every now and then but i've never ever seen one or had one come loose it's obviously when people worked on the vehicle so when they have just make sure you double check those you can hold the bolt at this end and tighten the nut at that nut at that end right um yeah, makes you wonder how you get the bolt out, doesn't it? It's a long bolt. Anyway, I've never seen problems with lower control arms. We don't change them. Of course, they want to sell you that stuff as well. It's up to you. Each to their own. Whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> what would I know, right? So sway bar, we haven't even loosened. It's in position. Tie rod ends there. Like I said, it's just a tight. See, it's a bit tight getting it through there. So you've got to wiggle a bit. So if you're putting in new suspension for someone... And let's say this sway, sway bar's tightened up a bit further backwards or forwards, you know, because there's a little bit of wiggle room there. Might make it a bit tidy, might scratch the springs. But look, you know, whatever. It's not hard to take the sway bar. Once you've got the bash plates off, a couple more brackets and Bob's your uncle. Anyway, um, we might just leave. This will be part of the job we're doing, but we, we'll get the suspension done first. And the pads and rotors, we might put in a separate video, but we're going to change the pads and rotors at this point in time while it's on the hoist as well. And we've got some work to do at the back with a sticking handbrake and a few things like that. But this is getting it apart, so I think we'll wrap this video up at this so point. We showed you all that and talked showed about you that. these bushes and arms and talked about that. So I think that's about it in this video. Subscribe, turn the bell, and hit the like button. Catch you on the next one. See ya.